Jason Kahn is a managing director at KPMG Bermuda, where he leads the Insurance Link Securities practice. This means that he is often one of the first people to be involved in new developments in both the alternative and traditional reinsurance industries. We spoke to him about recent changes in the market and what he thinks might happen next. One of the reinsurance brokers said recently that the pricing on some deals had fallen to a level that hadn't been seen in a generation. How did we get to that position? I think it's a combination of factors. I think we've had an extended period of time where there really hasn't been much in the way of large events. Okay, we had we had some some, some pretty severe claims in 2011, but they were quickly forgotten about, um, and that certainly had a damping effect on rates. But probably more important has been the amount of alternative capital coming into both the um, short tail and to the casualty market. Maybe I'll deal with each of those in turn. On the uh, on the short tail market, of course, cap bonds been out there for, for for a long time, but it's only been more recently, maybe the last three, four, five years, where the investor community perhaps driven by lack of opportunity elsewhere, um, has really been attracted into insurance contracts as, a, as, a, as an asset class. And we're seeing it in you know, you know, more cap bonds, um, uh, more collateralized structures, ILS funds, listed ILS funds. There's a, there's a lot happening. There's a lot of money coming into the sector at the moment. Um, to the extent that, that, that you know, there's probably more capital out there than actually put to work, and that's really had a dampening effect on the uh, on, on, on rates. Um, and then on the casualty side, um, the hedge fund reinsurer model has again been out there for a long time. So you know, um, more capital formed uh, Max Re twenty years ago. Greenlight's been out there for ten years. Um, but more recently, we've seen we've seen um, you know. Uh, a large number coming to market at a similar time. So we have Third Point, we have um, Two Sigma, we have Highbridge Capital, we have Paulson, uh, we have Pine River. So there's been a number of hedge funds that have been um, been very active in this space, informing insurance companies. Um, and they like the model where they have permanent capital, they have um, a float built into 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 the model. And they, they're looking really to make money on the asset side of the balance sheet, which means that they can cut the rates that they're prepared to provide casualty business. Um, and I think, uh, I think that's starting to soften the casualty side of the market. And indeed, I think we'll see some of that going forward. So you're seeing no signs that investors are becoming reticent to put more capital to work in the sector? I do. I think we're starting to see... Um, some preliminary or early indications that maybe the market, uh, certainly on, on the on the short tail side, is starting to flatten at least. Um, you know, one of the Queen Street vehicles uh, recently was unable to get the funding that it was looking for, and they they had to they had to, to pull the deal at least temporarily. Um, we're also aware a number of the ILS funds have been. Um, very open about the fact they've been in a soft close and not accepting um, new investors. So, uh, so whilst there's there's new new money um, trying to get in, um, you know, existing players and vehicles are are, 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 um, are not taking the money, and new starts are struggling to get the money that they want. Um, so that that could mean an environment where at least rates will move sideways um, in the casualty market. Um, you know, I, I think rates will continue to soften if we get more hedge fund reinsurers coming in, 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 into play because, you know, they're, they're, if they're making 15, 20% per annum on the asset side of the balance sheet, they can even write casualty business at a, 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 at a loss or a small loss um, because it's cheaper, it's cheaper finance and cheaper leverage than getting bank. So um, I, think, I think we've got some more, some more, some more dampening of the casualty to come. But absent the big events, I really see, um, I really see the short tail. Uh, rates going sideways for a while. And do you think the opportunities or perhaps lack of opportunities in other asset classes are affecting um, how people view the sector? I think so. I mean, my own view is there's an amount of money in the sector that is permanent. So I think you know, pension fund, institutional money, you know, that can allocate 2%, 3% of, of a, of a multi-billion dollar portfolio, those guys are likely to be uh, in, in this area for the long term. 
as with some hedge funds, but I also think there is opportunistic money in, in, in the market. Um, and I think, you know, as, as, as the economy moves forward and um, investment opportunities change, that could change um, the, 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 the investment decision-making process of, of some of this opportunistic money. So interesting, I was reading an article in the, um, in the New York Times recently that talked about, you know, how a lot of the market seems to be fully invested. There's certainly speculation by a number of market commentators around um, asset bubbles again or, or things maybe shaping towards asset bubbles. Um, but that won't always be the case. And I think, I think where money can be put to work and made a greater return for a similar or even lesser risk, I think that will pull some money out of, out of the sector. Um, timing on that is, is obviously very uncertain, but I think that is that's certainly a scenario that we may, we may see. Um, in terms of interest rates, I don't actually see changes in interest rates per se affecting the sector unless we get a sharp uh, steepening of the yield curve. So I think most of the deals at the moment are fairly short term, one to three years, let's say. I think if, if, if investors can be attracted to five year, ten year investments to get compensated for that, again, that could be another, another um, catalyst for some of the capital moving ahead. How do you see traditional and alternative reinsurers adapting their strategies to uh, this change marketplace? The, 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 the traditional reinsurers, I feel, have, have, have been on the defensive um, for, for the reasons we've just been discussing about new capital coming to the market, pricing, softening. Some of those traditional reinsurers have been earlier, or early or earlier adopters of, um, of the use of third party capital. And a number have now developed models where they are acting um, as underwriters for pools of third party capital and earning a fee for, for doing that business. Still retaining some skin in the game, but nonetheless um, are migrating their model somewhat towards a fee business where you know the returns they get in are enhancing their return on capital. Um, and I do expect that trend to continue. I think um, we may also see um, a premium being placed on underwriting talent. I think that the, the, the value of underwriters in this market is, is, is as great as it's ever been. Um, and we may even see some traditional reinsurers uh, looking to um, return capital to shareholders and moving more towards an underwriting agency type of model. Um, or somewhat similar to Lloyd's, to be honest, but, but some of those underwriting agents may be, may be listed there as well. So it's a very dynamic, very fluid type of, type of environment. And the alternative reinsurers, uh, do you see them adapting too? We are. So, so the alternatives really started in the capital bond, the capital bond funds, for example, been out there for, for a long time. Um, but that, that has migrated now into non-model type of risk coming into these funds. And I think, you know, a number of the ILS funds and others are looking to push the boundaries further to encompass um, you know, satellite, energy, marine, um, even liability types of risks. There's been discussion in the market uh, quite recently around how you can securitize casualty type of business. So whether you have some sort of auction or commutation clause or maybe a combination of both um, within, within a structure to enable an investor to exit after three to five years. So there's a lot of dynamics happening in the market um, at the moment.